In just over a century, our view of the cosmos has gone from stargazing to orbiting, from wondering what's out there to seeing Earth from above. And along that journey, many new perspectives have emerged, ideas shaped not by myth or speculation, but by something more grounded, patterns and observable rhythms in the architecture of the heavens. And among them was a beautiful idea that pointed to a missing planet between Mars and Jupiter. In this video, we'll follow the rise of one of astronomy's most captivating theories, how it emerged, why it endured, and what ultimately unraveled it. It's a story not just of a missing world, but of how our understanding of the solar system has evolved through observations, forming and testing hypotheses, and sometimes by letting go of even the most beautiful of ideas. Because in the search for that missing planet, we uncovered something deeper. How planets form and why some never make it. The year was 1766 and the cosmos was beginning to yield its secrets. Isaac Newton had revealed the invisible forces that govern the heavens. Telescopes were reaching farther into the night sky, and for the first time in history, the heavens were beginning to yield their secrets. And it was in this atmosphere of growing confidence that two astronomers, Johann Titus and Johann Bode, noticed something strange. The distances of the known planets from the Sun didn't seem random. They appeared to follow a pattern, with each orbiting at about twice the distance from the Sun as the one before. And the pattern seemed to hold. Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars each aligned in the sequence almost perfectly. And then came a breakthrough, confirmation in 1781, when astronomers discovered a new planet, Uranus, nearly where Bode's law had predicted it should be. Suddenly, the pattern took on new significance, new credibility. But with it came a problem. According to Bode's law, as you went beyond Mars, there should have been a planet before Jupiter, roughly 2.8 astronomical units from the Sun. And yet, when telescopes turned to the sky, they found nothing, just silence where a planet was supposed to be. But then something appeared. In 1801, Italian astronomer Giuseppe Piazzi saw something unexpected. While cataloguing stars, he noticed one that moved. Night after night, it shifted against the backdrop of fixed stars and he realised this was no star, but a small round object orbiting the Sun. He had discovered Ceres, and it was exactly where the missing planet was supposed to be. At first, it seemed the mystery had been solved, the missing planet found at last, but then more objects appeared. Pallas, Juno and Vesta, all orbiting in the same region. Not one world, but many. The solar system was speaking, but not in the way the astronomers of the day expected, as each of these small bodies was orbiting where a planet should have been. The pattern had pointed to a single world, but instead they were finding many, and so a new idea began to take shape. That long ago, a planet may have formed in that space, only to be torn apart by some unimaginable force with its remains scattered across the void. The idea was powerful and it made sense of the observations, and for a time it became an accepted truth. And with it, the lost world of Phaeton was born. The idea that Phaeton was a lost world captured imaginations and endured well into the mid-20th century. But as observations became more precise and astronomers gained a better understanding of the asteroid belt's mass and its composition, the story began to unravel. They realised the total mass of the belt was far too small. Even if every fragment were gathered, they wouldn't form a moon-sized object. In fact, the entire asteroid belt is less than 4% the mass of our moon. That wasn't just small, it was vanishingly small. Far too little to be the remains of a shattered planet. In addition, further analysis of asteroid composition revealed another problem the presence of distinctly different asteroid types. Some like Ceres were carbon rich, others like Juno were silicate rich, and then there were metallic bodies like Cleopatra. 
That level of variation was unexpected, because if they were all fragments of the same planet, their composition should have been more uniform. Most significantly, orbital dynamics cast doubt on the destruction theory, because an explosion powerful enough to destroy a planet would have scattered its fragments widely, creating highly eccentric and chaotic orbits. But the stable circular orbits of the asteroid belt objects stood at odds with what a violent destruction should have left behind. Piece by piece the evidence mounted until the elegant myth the Phaeton began to crack, then crumble, which begged the question, if there was no planet, what was this field of scattered asteroid debris? If not the wreckage of a world destroyed, then what stopped a planet from ever forming? As the old story fell apart, a new understanding began to emerge. Observations painted a different picture, and simulations of the early solar system helped bring it into focus. The asteroid belt wasn't the wreckage of a planet destroyed, it was the remnant of one that never formed. A collection of ancient bodies, the leftovers of planetesimals, the raw materials of a planet that never came to be. And the reason why was Jupiter. The giant loomed just beyond, its gravity immense and unrelenting. According to models like the Grand Tack, Jupiter didn't stay still. It migrated inward then outward again, sweeping through the young protoplanetary disk like a wrecking ball. Through orbital resonances, Jupiter's gravitational influence stirred the region into chaos, scattering planet-forming material and disrupting the calm conditions needed for accretion so worlds could grow. The result wasn't a destroyed planet, it was a planet that never had the chance. The asteroid belt isn't a graveyard, it's a fossil field, preserved from a time when worlds were still trying to be born. Today, the asteroid belt is no longer seen as the aftermath of catastrophe, but as a living archive of the early solar system a window into the raw materials and processes that built the planets. In unravelling the myth of Phaeton, science uncovered something deeper. Not every planet that could have formed did. And in that realisation, science uncovered something more lasting. A lesson in how discovery often begins with being wrong. It reminds us that the path to truth is often paved with beautiful mistakes. And that sometimes, by chasing the wrong idea, we find the right one.